all of the problems from these videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I upload to YouTube. In fact, on the website, there are over a hundred extra videos that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. Okay, let's get started with the problem. Okay, let's examine problem one four. And there's just a lot of jargon here. JIT, TQM, Six Sigma, ABC, Theory of Constraints, and Balanced Scorecard. These are all terms that get thrown around in a uh, typical chapter one of an intro accounting text. And it's just worth knowing what the terms mean. They're useful in management and they are useful in management accounting as well, as we'll see some of these we spend a lot of time on in this course. Uh, so JIT stands for just in time inventory. Um, and so it's all about uh, getting our inventory just in time for when we need to use it. And the reason that's important is because inventory is costly, like it costs money. So if you can imagine we're Apple and Apple gets a lot of its uh, processors and I think even some of its RAM and, you know, all this, the innards of its iPhones come from Samsung, actually a big competitor. You might think, oh, they don't work together. No, oh, no, they work together a lot. So uh, Apple orders RAM from Samsung, let's say. Um, well, if Apple orders a bunch of RAM from Samsung and they have to wait for the RAM to come from Samsung, they order, you know, uh, a million little RAM chips uh, to make a million phones. Let's just, you know, go with me on this. There's a million little RAM chips and it's going to go into a million phones. And so they order the million RAM chips and they start making phones. And sure enough, they just put one into each phone and they're making, you know, 25,000 phones a day and they go through the RAM in about 40 days. Well, wouldn't it be better if, for Apple, rather than getting the million RAM chips all at once, if they could just get it just as they needed it for production. So they're not sitting on these million RAM chips and most of them are just sitting there and they're just using the ones uh, off the top of the pile. Wouldn't it be better if they just had enough to fill that day or maybe that week's worth of orders and when they needed more, they could get more. Wouldn't that be much better if you were Apple? And the answer is yes, that would be way, way better. But big if, you have to trust your supplier, right? If you can't rely on Samsung to deliver the RAM just in time, you're better off to have big stockpiles of it. Well, businesses have realized it's not worth it for them to have big stockpiles. They would rather risk running out uh, than, than uh, having big stockpiles. The reason they don't want to have big stockpiles of extra inventory is it's costly. It costs a lot of money just to have it. You're, you're out the cash, you know, you've paid the cash, you're sitting on, on this inventory, not using it. It's wasteful. You're wasting your time. So just in time inventory is something that companies seek to reduce the time that inventory is sitting around. They're getting their inventory just in time to put it in their product, just in time to ship it out to customers. TQM and Six Sigma are related. Uh, TQM stands for Total Quality Management. Uh, Six Sigma refers to like a standard deviation sort of chart. So if this is a normal curve. Woo, well, it's not a very good normal curve. Six Sigma means it's six standard deviations, which is like way down here somewhere at this end of the, the normal curve. And basically it's saying, look, if we have this many mistakes, <laughs> the six standard deviations from the mean, it means we're going to have virtually zero. Uh, and TQM is going for the same thing, total quality management. It means, and Six Sigma means we want to be continuously improving whatever our product or our process to make that product is. We want to make it better, 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 and just constantly be thinking, how can I do this better? How can I do this more efficiently? How can I do this in a more air-free way? in order to better serve my customers and minimize mistakes. They're both driving, all about driving mistakes down to zero uh, and improving your company's processes. So I'm not gonna explore them much more than to say they're all about improving company processes and making companies more efficient and, and, and more air-free. Okay, ABC stands for Activity-Based 
costing, and it's a way of determining your product's cost. Uh, we're going to learn about it all in chapter four or five, five of this uh, workbook. Uh, but it's a more accurate costing system. So again, when you, when my friend opens up her restaurant and she says, okay, my, uh, to buy a nice veggie burger at my restaurant costs 10 bucks, you know, for the customer. And she wants to determine, okay, what's her cost on it? And of course she's got meat and she's got buns and she's got uh, condiments and she's got employees wages that cooked it. And she's also got to deal with the, like the cost of the gas and the lights and all of that. How does she determine her cost? Well, there's a number of ways to do it. Activity-based costing is by far the most accurate uh, of the ways of costing that we're going to explore in this class. Uh, but there are disadvantages of it as well. But you can imagine having very accurate cost data. So she knows, okay, it's $10 is the price. That's what my customer pays me. It costs me, let's say $6 in terms of meat, bun, labor cost, and lights, and uh, you know, uh, gas cost to heat the grill uh it cost me six dollars so i'm making four dollars on the deal well if her costing data is inaccurate you know if her costing data uh, says it costs eight dollars when really it costs six she might end up charging too much for a product or too little for a product so activity-based costing is all about having and striving for accurate costing theory of constraints is our next example and the theory of constraints says we should look at our company's process and try to improve, focus our improvements around the processes that are slowing us down, around the processes that are constraining us. Um, so let's say we are a, um, a pen manufacturer, okay? So I manufacture this pen. And again, let's say there's two departments, the plastic, case and then the ink section in the middle there's like an ink part in the middle so the plastic case and the ink part so i have the case section case department and the ink department and these two departments can work independently of each other the case department it takes let's just again i'm throwing numbers around here let's say it takes one hour to make a case and it takes two hours to make ink and the departments combine and then it goes on to packaging, assembly and packaging. And that takes one hour. Well, how long does it take me to get an order out the door? Well, if I had an order that came in fresh right now uh, and I wanted to go from nothing to, you know, a pen. It would take me two hours to go through ink, one hour to go through case, and one hour to go through packaging. But I could do case and ink at the same time, so it would take me two hours to get the ink there, the case would be waiting there, and one hour to go out the door and packaging. It would take three hours. That's my critical path. If somebody told me, hey, I can cut your case manufacture time by 10 minutes, well, it would, I mean, we probably wouldn't turn them down, but the theory of constraints says it's much more valuable if we could cut our ink time or our packaging time because those are what's adding you know two hours to do my ink one hour to do my packaging that's my three hours if i can cut the case time sure that's nice to be more efficient but it's not critical theory of constraints says let's focus on that critical path which is the uh, ink and the packaging focus on that critical path make the things along the critical path to get better um, and the company as a whole will get better a lot faster than if we focus on things that are not constraints. Focusing on things that are not constraints, the theory of constraints argues, is not well used time. Okay, the final item we're going to look at, and we will spend quite a bit of time on this through the course, is the balanced scorecard. The balanced scorecard says, look, when we're looking at how a company is doing, we're evaluating how we're performing, a lot of times people focus on the financial. That's what I focus on, and that's I'm guilty of that myself. I'm an accountant, so I have that bias. But the balanced scorecard says we should absolutely not focus on financial outcomes. Uh, the balanced scorecard says we need to focus on learning and growth uh internal processes uh 
customer and finally financial and really in that order and the idea here is if we focus on learning and growth and let's just say um, as an example I, I've been um, at the supermarket recently and they're advertising that they have faster checkouts right now at my local supermarket uh, and so let's say they've decided you know the customer has, has said oh their checkouts are too slow at superstore and they've complained or they get lots of feedback and uh, they've decided we want to make checkouts a priority well the first thing they do is they train their employees so learning and growth right their employees attend a training session internal processes Checkouts are 10% faster as a result of the training. We train our employees as to how to get customers through the checkout more quickly or, or how to you know, scan the items more quickly, whatever it is that's slowing us down. Uh, our customers, hopefully they notice and customer satisfaction goes up, right? Our customer satisfaction increases. If all of those things are true, Hopefully we get more customers and revenue goes up. So what the balance scorecard says is, look, don't start by saying, hey, I want more revenues. Start by saying, how can I improve what I do to satisfy my customers better to drive revenues up? So focus on the, in fact, these three on the left, these three, are called lead indicators. This one is called a lag indicator. And the idea here is if I focus on my lead indicators, and these are the things I have the power to impact, my financial stuff will follow. And in fact, I don't really have the power to directly influence my financial indicators. I can only influence the things on the left. And really the two left most are, are my key things that I can influence. Uh, the customer will react how they choose to react, but the two on the left, I can absolutely take time to train my employees better, and I can absolutely take time to make my internal processes better. Hopefully the customers respond, and if the customers respond, hopefully there's a better financial result for me. Uh, but the three on the left are considered lead indicators, the one on the right is considered a lag indicator because it happens later. I do all the good stuff, and then months later I see uh, the results. You don't tend to see the financial results right away. So, so often when we evaluate a company or a manager and how we're do they're doing, we just look at this one. The balanced scorecard says we should be measuring all of these things. So not only do we like say, oh, we want to train our employees, we actually want to measure it. We want to say 90% of EEs receive, I don't know, four hour training session, right? Something like that. It's measurable and I can evaluate something. I can say, did 90% of our employees get that? And yes or no. Checkouts are 10% faster. Okay, there's a good measure. Customer satisfaction up. Well, what does that mean? Maybe on the last customer satisfaction score that we got a three out of five and we want a 3.5 out of five on their next round. So we measure that revenue up again, maybe last month our revenue uh, was a million dollars and we want it to be 1.1 million dollars or whatever the the revenue happens to be for that company so balanced scorecard measure the things on well on all facets but really focus in on the three items on the left to drive the financial indicators don't just focus on financial uh, uh, results okay there we have it that's it for problem one four